The next piece of the after treatment puzzle and the last big piece is the SCR element itself. The SCR element is not serviceable. It can be damaged. Uh, it really can't be cleaned except by a stationary regen. It has a knock sensor that screws in it at the very outlet. On the next video, we'll see where there's a new sensor called the particulate matter sensor. We'll talk about that later. It has uh, two temperature sensors in it, and then it's a sealed unit. Inside, there's uh, between two to three, and rarely, but I, I was told, sometimes four separate elements. Uh, so its main job is to uh, convert, with the help of depth fluid, any NOx, NOx, nitrogen oxides, into just nitrogen and, and water. Uh, the, the last element that the gas hits is made to uh, neutralize any DEF fluid that maybe got through it so we're not running ammonia out the exhaust. So the, it does a pretty good job of doing that. And depending on the engine and the system and, and the uh, vintage, there might be two or three or maybe even four elements. The one that we did cut open one time actually had three separate elements in it. Uh, they were about maybe a foot to 16 inches long and the very last one was not that thick. I think it might have been six or eight inches thick and there's there's almost no space between them. Uh, just enough room for the temperature probes. Why temperature probes? Because at outlet knock sensor they want to they want to know what the temperature is inside the SCR brake because there's a temperature range where the DEF fluid is very, very efficient. They like to keep that temperature between 5 and about 800 degrees running down the road. That's where everything's pretty efficient and there's a good exhaust flow so things are mixing good in the decomp pipe and then the SCR system's pretty efficient. Uh, we're going to look in the video at uh, the where to get the information for the numbers to replace the SCR brick. They're supposed to be found in uh, Cummins Quick Serve under your engine number, but they're not always there because basically Cummins ships a bunch of engines to an OEM and they ship a bunch of after treatment or crates of after treatment to the OEM. And the OEM, depending on what calibration they put in that engine, whether it's a 450 horse or a 550 horse, that's going to determine which one of those after treatments is going to go on. They're different part numbers. So it's not one fits all by any stretch of the imagination. So the OEM is supposed to report back to Cummins, we use this after treatment, these part numbers on this engine. Sometimes it happens. A lot of times it doesn't. Uh, so some OEMs are really good about it. Some aren't so good at connecting the dots. So the best thing to do is get the numbers right off of the elements. What's the problem with that? Well, four or five years in the salt, or if the numbers are underneath a clamp and the clamp, there's always vibration, there's rust, the number is illegible. The numbers are laser etched on, so they look like you wrote them on kind of in, in, in stencil almost. But they're laser etched. They're not stamped in the element because they don't want to damage the, the case. So the laser etching doesn't always do so well. If I owned a vehicle when I got it, I would get those numbers off of there and write them down. On the newest engines out, Cummins has put the after treatment numbers in the features and parameters because when they ship the engine, the after treatment that goes with that engine goes to the OEM and it has to go on. So there's no more guesswork on the stuff that's about 2020 and newer, the X15 stuff. So uh, that's kind of the scoop on that. We're going to look and see 
where you find the numbers on the after treatment, and then how you would look to see which one you need. And we'll talk about that as we go along. SCR bricks can have a life. We have some that last in a million miles, really the life of the engine for the overhaul. And uh, so they can be poisoned if somebody puts chemicals in a depth fluid that, that shouldn't be in there. Uh, water doesn't do anything, but um, if they put something maybe real alkaline or something that will actually burn, instead of uh, vaporizing, actually burn a coating and coat the element, that can damage it. Diesel fuel, people put diesel fuel in that tank, believe it or not, that can make the element inefficient. So <clears throat> it can be damaged and it has to be replaced. If you have to replace an SCR brick, you are looking at somewhere between $2,800 to $3,100 in just parts and then labor. Now Cummins has a lot of campaigns on the SCR bricks. And the, the original bricks that came with the engines uh, many times are being replaced under a campaign. A lot of times the campaigns, in fact, most of the time the campaigns are paying for everything, even though the engine's long out of warranty, that might have high mileage, whatever. It would behoove you, if you have a truck that you own or you buy one, that you take the engine number and go get a check to see if there's an open campaign on the SCR brick, and then let, let Cummins do that, or if you have a shop that does your work that can file warranty a dealer, they can do it and file warranty on it. And they'll pay to check it, and if it doesn't need replaced, then you're not supposed to get a bill from the dealer. So uh, let's take a look. So this top element right here that you see is your typical SCR brick. You can see it's about the length of the cabinet that it fits in. And this particular cabinet would bolt to the side of the truck on a passenger side, and it would end up being the steps that the passenger would walk up on to get in. And down underneath, you can see the decomp pipe with the def injector on it, and you see that guard on over that with the holes in it. So the SCR brick is not sectioned. It's one piece. It's all welded together. You strap a bracket on with something called a T-bolt clamp, it's just a big strap clamp with an eye on it. That holds a bracket, and on the bracket bolts all of those devices you see. This is a newer system, so it has modular temperature sensors. They're not individual probes. They go into a smart box. It has a, uh, this one actually has a knock sensor on it, and it also has a particulate matter sensor, and it has a control for that. So there's some extra stuff on this because it's a later generation. But that is the SCR element. Uh, and this assembly is getting, actually in this photo, being put right back into the truck now. We bolt it back up in there, hook up the wires to the cannon plug, and we're ready to go. Start with the DOC because all these elements, the DOC, the DPF, and the SCR, do have numbers laser etched on them. It's the best place to get them. Uh, so here we have on the top on the left it says CES assembly that's Cummins emission solution that's their number starts with an A the next one down is the Cummins manufacturing identifier that number doesn't really mean anything the bottom number is the Cummins manufacturing identifier weldment and that is the actual in this case diesel oxidation catalyst service part number so this DOC would be ordered as a 435-2947 in this example. And uh, this is how you look at these numbers. Now on the right, you see the after treatment serial number. You can also put that serial number in a box I'll show you later, and then it can bring up the element. Here we are moving to the diesel particulate filter. This is an example of how to find the numbers. Uh, the, the numbers are stamped somewhere on the can. It can be in different places because there's many orientations on the outlets. On the right, the photograph is an actual photograph of laser etching on an element that we replaced. 
And <clears throat> the top number there, you can follow the red arrow down, is again the CES, the Cummins Emission Solution number. In this case, it starts with a Q. You could put that into the emissions catalog and QuickServe, it would bring it up. Next is the Cummins part number. That's the general part number that the parts guys and everybody knows. So this is a 287-1581, and they, the parts guys could, at Cummins or the dealer, can supersede it if it needs to be. The bottom number is a serial number, and again, you can use a serial number in the Emission Solutions catalog for a search. I'll show you that a little bit later. And if you find numbers that look this good, you're lucky. They're usually not that good. This is an actual photo off of the SCR brick. Yes, we've made it to the SCR brick. And um, here's an example. And again, you have Cummins Emission Solutions, Cummins Manufacturing Identifier, <clears throat> which is looks like a good part number, but it doesn't work. I'll show you that later. And then you have the Cummins Manufacturing Identifier Weldment Service Part Number. And that's the actual part number. And that number is a number that we're going to put in a tool that Cummins wrote. The tool runs an Excel spreadsheet, and it's a, it's a macro-laden spreadsheet, and you just put the number in, and you can download it, but you have to be able to get into QuickServe into the warranty section. So really, you're going to have to call Cummins with these numbers, and they can tell you if you got a campaign on your engine or not. I'm going to show you how you can tell if you have access to QuickServe for your engine number. And we're going to talk in a, in a video very soon on how you can gain access to QuickServe uh, at no cost to you. Uh, so that, that's a great thing. So here we are in the Cummins Service Tool. I, on the right is the SCR brick, and on the left is two screenshots of the same place in that macro uh, Excel spreadsheet that we use to search for numbers. So we're going to try the 2880416, which would be the Cummins Manufacturing Identifier first. I type that in. You can see it up on the top there in the brown. You type it in, you hit enter, and it says CES, Cummins Emission Solution Number, nothing found. And so it says, do not order this part. Now, we go to the bottom number. I reset the fields. I type the bottom number in. You can see the, on the top in the brown, 2880466. Hit enter. And all of a sudden, we've got the Cummins Emission Solution number is A045D083. And on the bottom is our replacement brick, 432-9109. Notice the brick in the unit is a 2880466, but the replacement is a different one. And we look here. And it is an open campaign. And so <clears throat> in this particular case, Cummins will pay to replace that brick. And as I mentioned earlier, in this case, if you had to pay for this, the bill out the door would be probably pushing 3800 bucks plus tax. But if you took it to the distributor or a dealer, just for this, your bill out the door would be zero. Now, hardware breaks, things don't screw out, they galled. Cummins will pay for the sensors that you try to get out of that old brick if they galled or they break off. They want you to try and get them out. They want you to put some penetrating oil on them. But if they don't come out, they will pay to replace them because they're telling you you have to replace that brick. They will also pay reasonable mounting hardware. So if the bolts break off that hold the clamp together or, the or if they got band clamps and they break, Cummins will pay you what those cost you to replace. So they're pretty fair about this. So that's the SCR brick and how to identify it. And remember, the SCR brick's job is to reduce NOx, nit nit uh, oxides of nitrogen, using atomized def fluid and out the stack comes nitrogen and then carbon dioxide. Thanks for joining me. On some of the videos that I do, I give you part numbers. If you notice, I didn't give you any SCR brick part numbers. I didn't give you any knock sensor part numbers. I didn't give you any temperature sensor part numbers. 
in every SCR element, there's two temperature sensors, an inlet and an outlet. And remember, no heat's made in that brick. It's just measuring the heat as it goes through the element so the system knows what to expect <clears throat> on the outlet knock sensor that is screwed into the elbow coming out of the SCR brick, which is where the exhaust system takes it to the either down and out or up the stacks and out. Uh, there's probably about 15 to 20, as far as I know, SCR bricks that would all fit in there. Um, they're all different part numbers, and they're, they're not so much different because of configuration in and out. They're different because of differences in the elements or the coatings inside the elements. And that happens because it changes with, with the amount of load, the horsepower. I shouldn't say load. I should say the gross horsepower of the engine when it's running under full load. The horsepower it makes, the torque it makes, the RPM band it runs in. So as you change ECM calibrations, a 400 horse engine would have probably a different SCR brick than a 550 or 605. If you put the wrong brick on, a lot of times what will happen is you're going to be plagued with SCR faults until you put the right brick on. So you have to get the right one from the word go. If you have a PACAR product and the number is illegible, you can take the VIN, go to PACAR, and they can look up what they put on originally. And then the dealer can take that number and they can put it in that tool that I showed you and get the new number that goes on. So um, the temperature sensors can be different part numbers too. Knock sensors, we'll talk about those in another video. They're actually pretty easy compared to the other sensors. There's no maintenance for the SCR brook short of doing the stationary regen. And uh, that's about it. So see you next time.